immediately I noticed, I thought, man, this guy does not miss a thing, does he? Just um, very thorough, amazing analysis. And when I had the chance to hear um, his, uh, his podcast and his uh, radio show, um, it caught my attention real quick because I heard in his voice uh, the compassion. The compassion to present the gospel and reach out to people. And I thought, man, i got to find a way to meet this guy. And I got the idea, I'm going to invite him to a conference and have him speak, and then I get to meet him. So, uh, Jeffrey Rott is the, um, is the webmaster of Look Up Fellowship. He has a radio show called Right Now Radio. Um, and among other things, he's also a husband and a father. And he's going to be sharing with us what the Lord has laid on his heart uh, for the next hour. I know he's prayed about this. I know he's seek the Lord. And please pray for him as he comes up. Jeffrey Rott. I thought I told uh, Tom that redheads blush easily, but I guess he didn't take that to heart. So, uh, First and foremost, seriously, it's, it's just an honor and a privilege to be here. I want to thank Tom for inviting me. Uh, again, as a left-handed redhead and one that talks about end times a lot, you can imagine I don't really get invited to a lot of functions or people don't really like to talk to me too much about such things. So it's really great to be here. And thank you to all of you for coming out as well. Um, I, I want to start by just kind of going back to what happened last night. Those of you who were here in attendance last night, uh, you know that uh, a young girl by the name of Jillian, I believe it was, from Tom's church, sang a beautiful song about our, our Lord and Savior. And she also talked a little bit about uh, a mission experience she recently had and how you know, she, she planned and prepared for so long, put the lesson plan together, uh, was ready to get out there and, and teach these kids what she had put together. And she said, isn't it just like God to, when you feel like you have everything together, you know, just kind of show you who's boss and, and make sure that you're living obediently to him. And, you know, I, I, I laughed at the table when I heard that because I can identify this past week. I, I had spent the last two or three months, I mean, since I knew about the conference, obviously play, praying about what subject to focus on, what it was that he wanted me to talk about to all of you this morning. Um, and, and I'll tell you, I had everything set in stone. I had my notes ready to go. I was ready to, to uh, uh, print it out and do some test runs as, as late as, uh, or as recent as Monday or Tuesday. And then a funny thing happened come Monday night. Uh, I won't get into all the specifics, but it became pretty clear that God had other plans. And I didn't understand it. I, I thought it was crazy. I thought it was ludicrous. But I basically scrapped most of the presentation that I had put together up to that point. Uh, it's still on nanotechnology and what I perceive to be the, the spiritual uh, threat that it poses to us, even in its early stages right now. But I, I got to tell you, I mean, it's, it, uh, she told her story yesterday, and I just sat there and, and chuckled to myself and shook my head. So I bring that up for two reasons. One, to just kind of point out the, the beautiful mystery of how God operates in our lives and, and uh, how consistent he is. Uh, in addition to that, I, I, I want to apologize. I bring it up because I want to apologize up front. Because this is so new to me, uh, I'm going to be reading a lot here. There's a lot of information that I do want to share and get out there. So. If I'm looking down a lot more than you'd like, it's not because I don't want to see your, your beautiful smiling faces, uh, you know, like I'm trying to put a squash in any kind of fellowship here. But again, I just want to make sure that everything that he has laid on my heart to share with you this morning, I want to make sure I get as much of it out in the allotted time that I have. So uh, I appreciate your understanding in that regard. This morning, I, I just want to take some time to talk about nanotechnology. It's likely connection to the, the infamous Mark of the Beast prophecy. Uh, of course, many of you probably know that nanotechnology provides this world with the type of tech that gives our generation reason to believe that ours is that final generation that Jesus himself spoke about throughout the Gospels. I mean, yeah, every generation prior to ours has thought theirs was the last one. But it, it's things like nanotechnology that, to me, say, look, we have more reason to think than any generation before us that ours is it. And that we better, we better start taking that seriously and living more seriously than we have been. Um, and it's not just uh, nanotechnology, it's, it's all the other signs that are happening 
at the same time. So when you put it all together, uh, the, the spiritual convergence, if you will, is palpable to me. And uh, hopefully that's something that's going to come across here at the end of this presentation. But here's what I hope to accomplish this morning. First, I want to quick, quickly define nanotechnology, uh, talk about some of its real-world applications that we find in our everyday lives, and uh, quite frankly, it surprised the heck out of me. There are a lot of them. Uh, next, I want to share some serious speculations about what I envision to be nanotech's likely connection to the fulfillment of end times prophecy, mainly its connection to the mark of the beast. And last but not least, I want to share some curious observations from just this past week alone, uh, taken out of the mainstream news, that have forced me to consider the deeper spiritual implications and, and the deeper prophetic implications. Uh, so, and that, that, a lot of that ties directly into what I was talking about, where, where God kind of said, look, I, I want you to include this in your presentation. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing this morning. And, and again, make no mistake, I, I truly believe that while all technology is not necessarily inherently evil at its root level. Uh, from what I've seen, nanotechnology appears to be one of those forbidden sciences right down to its root level. And uh, as Christians, hopefully that will, you know, you'll start to see the reasons why we need to be mindful of it, why we need to be uh, aware of what's going on in the field, and why we need to start telling others about it as well. It's, you know, it's not just a convenience thing. All right, so how many of you this past summer uh, swung an aluminum baseball bat? Or how many of you rode a, a brand new bicycle? Or played tennis, swung a tennis racket? How many of you in here applied sunscreen at some point this past summer? Right, I mean, chances are all of us have done one of those things in the past several months. Well, chances are that you were using a product that was made better by nanotechnology. And uh, it's one, of those, it's one of those things where, you know, we, we, we don't like to really think about it too much. I mean, if it makes our lives easier, if it makes our lives better, if it makes things more convenient for us, then human nature says, well, we're all for it. I mean, unless it affects me negatively on a personal level, well, I, I don't really care. I mean, I, I, might, I know that it has the potential to be bad, but unless I actually see it or feel it or witness it, you know, so what? Who cares? Well, I'm going to try to tell you why I think we need to really care about this. Um, for instance, and I'll give you another example here that might be more uh, relevant. Uh, how many people in here are wearing or own clothing that is wrinkle-resistant or uh, stain-free? I imagine, yeah, probably majority of us. Again, these are fabrics that are infused or, or created using current advances in nanotechnology. Uh, especially when it comes to the process responsible for creating a new, a new type of cotton uh, and silk fabrics where normally a spill just ruins it instantly. Well, now they have stuff on the market that if that happens, you get to keep that shirt. You get to keep that pair of pants. Uh, so at the very basic level, instead of using topical treatments in something like that, they use this nanotechnology to form a molecular bond with the fabric. A molecular bond with the fabric. And we're gonna come back to this idea of bonding and this bonding property that is so, uh, so much a part of nanotechnology. But, but again, this is just the beginning. I mean, not to stay on the, the fashion industry's uh, use of nanotechnology, but way back, even way back in 2004, they told us that nanotechnology would help them to create products that will trap odors, release them in the wash, make your skin feel cool, or even moisturize your feet. So, I mean, that's the kind of future that we're looking at. And you can imagine, I mean, how many people would eat that stuff up? How many people would go out and buy it the first day it's on the market? So, uh, just, just a, a brief glimpse at how much nanotechnology, how much of a role it already plays in our lives today. The point is that whether we realize it or not, nanotechnology already plays a major role in our daily lives, but at the same time, should we sacrifice common sense for a little bit of convenience? Is it all as non-threatening as the shirt that's on our back right now? That's what I want you to think about. So what is nanotechnology? I have to say that when I, I finally decided to move forward, when it became clear that this was the subject that uh, the Lord wanted me to research and bring to your attention this morning, 
uh, I was a little hesitant. Uh, I mean, outside of what I saw on TV and in the movies, all I knew about nanotech was that it, it was this, this cutting edge science that involved these really teeny tiny little robots. Uh, that was the, the extent of my knowledge about this, this side tech. And these little robots were called nanobots. So I knew, I knew that much. Uh, plus, I, I knew that it would kind of be the, the kind of science and technology that would probably be lost on me, It'd go right over my head or go in one ear and out the other. Uh, it just, you know, it just seemed that way. But as I, I, you know, realized that God had other plans and as I really began to study and, and hone in on what this is all about and, and what scientists, non-believing scientists, uh, feel about it and what they hope to do with it, that's when it became pretty apparent that uh, uh, this was an important subject and one that we need to start looking at and taking more seriously. And again, I said it at the outset, but I'll say it again. Uh, while all technology is not inherently evil at its root level uh, or, or dangerous per se, nanotechnology is a whole different animal, both literally and figuratively speaking. 